Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Gina and today we're going to be working on ephemera. That's my new thing, <laughs> is making ephemera. So I've only had the one video, but I've been doing a lot on my own, just kind of, you know, playing around and learning about it because this is something that's relatively new to me. And so this is one of the things that I created and I thought I would do a video on it because I thought it turned out pretty cute. So this was the first one I made, and I make it out of a doily. Here we go. I don't know how they all came out. Okay. <laughs> it's from Recollections, and it's just their paper doilies. And I was just messing around, um, seeing if I could figure out something cool to do with one of these doilies, and I ended up making this, and I thought it came out really cute. So we're going to work on that today. Now, just the other night, I did this one, and so I like that too. Um, for some reason, this one actually came out much better. I was struggling with this. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why, but anyway. So I thought, well, as far as the video goes, let's go ahead and use this size. And of course, you know, it, it should translate into a bigger doily if you want to make a bigger pocket. Like I said, I have been doing a lot on my own, and. Here are just some of the things that I've kind of been working on. Just kind of playing around. And here, you can see, look, there's another doily. I thought that came out kind of cool. Um, just some tags, and this was actually the very first thing that I did. And just pieces of cardboard, and they were glued together, actually hot glue. And it was after that I realized, you know, I really, at least one side should be folded because I don't know, I just didn't like how it looked with the hot glue. So I then moved to this. And this was made, oh, you know what, let me pull you back some. I had you real close so you could see the little doily thing. Okay, there we go. I went to um, something that already had a fold in it. And what this is, is a card. A, um, a card base. Actually, let's, uh, let's see, do I have one? This, this is how I buy my cards. I have a scoring board now, but I just as maybe two days ago. <laughs> so I've never had one, so I buy pre-made cards. And this was the very first pack I ever bought. And I meant to buy white. And uh, so I have a few packs of these, and I've had them for some time. So I thought it was high time I started using them. They're coming in super handy right about now. So that's how I made this one. That way I didn't have to hot glue anything. This isn't completed yet. I just kind of stopped. You can see I added a little pocket. I'm not sure what else I'm going to do to it, but anyway, that's how that came into existence. So I'm really digging this ephemera thing and I'm excited about making projects and sharing them with you. Hopefully you're uh, into that ephemera thing as well. This is what we're going to be working on today. I hope you stay with me. Let me get this cleaned up and we'll get started. Okay, I'm back. So I've got everything laid out. I want to go ahead and make three. I thought I might as well make a, a couple of extra while I'm doing this. I will probably do two of them, at least parts of the process, I'll do two of them off uh, camera. Now what I'm going to use to color is uh, watercolor. That's what I used to make this one. That's done with watercolor. I thought I would use um, is Vicky Bouton Bouton? Bouton Bouton? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how to say her name. I tell you what, if anybody can really feel confident that they know the correct way to say her name, please leave it in the comments. Um, like spell it out phonetically so I, I know how to say it. I always hate mispronouncing someone's name. You know, you want to get that right, but honestly, I don't know. I've heard it both ways, so I don't really know what the correct way is. Anyway, I'm going to be using her watercolor set. And I have, as you can see, I've taken it and I made my own little color palette. I don't know the names of the colors, and I can't even remember. I can't even remember if it came with it or not. Was I smart enough to put it under here? Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> I wasn't smart that day. Okay. But as you can see, <laughs> I kind of um, I numbered them and I numbered the bottles as well, or the little tubes. So that way I know exactly which one to get as to what color I want to use. 
And for this, I was thinking of combining a couple of colors. I think I want to combine, what is it, number 15 and number 12. And isn't that funny? This looks purple to me. But yeah, you see that? That's how it comes out. That's why it's so important that you create a color palette because you surely cannot rely on the color that's around them. At least for most of the watercolor sets that I've, I've, uh, had, I've worked with. Oh, I'm putting it back. Pay attention, Gina. Okay, number 15 and then number 12. Okay, let's work with those for now. Let's set that over here in case we want to add a different color. And I thought I would use these. I, I typically prefer um, the cake uh, watercolors, but I, you know, knowing that I'm going to need a lot, tube uh, watercolors that come in tubes are really the easiest and the best to use when you need a lot of watercolor. <laughs> and if I'm going to be painting three of these, and you, I do front and back, so yeah, I'm going to need right much watercolor. Let's. Uh, get these going. I'm not a big fan of tube watercolors to be honest. Like even opening this, oh my gosh, what a mess. It just, some of them squirted out and it just kept coming out. I couldn't get it to stop and I just feel like it's wasteful. But we are going to give it a go today. Okay, that is that blue. Huh. And, oopsies. Let's put the green in. All right. All righty. Another thing about numbering these, oh, Gina. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Sorry. What I was saying is another thing about numbering these is, is you know how to keep them in order and you know it matches your color palette so that's really kind of a handy thing if, you, if you're looking for a you know a system that might actually work for you okay <laughs> hopefully you don't drop it in your watercolors uh, okay here we go and i got a big brush and now i need some water i'm going to load this up still probably not enough, but we'll see. And like I said, I don't work with tube watercolors very often, so <laughs> I said it again. I tell you, when you record videos and you have to edit and hear yourself speak, you start to pick up on words that you use a lot. And a lot of times it's, um, um... <laughs> And I say that sometimes, but what I've noticed is I use the word so. So, you know. <laughs> so now, see? So now I've become really cognizant of when I say it. And I guess now you will too. <laughs> now that I've pointed it out. If you didn't before, you will now. <laughs> Just be aware I am trying to work on that. <laughs> because editing, I try to edit out, you know, as much as I can. But my goodness. I just can't take it all out. All right. Here we go. Let's give this a go. Isn't that pretty? Wow, I really like that. I really like that. I do have an idea. <laughs> I I do, I do, I do, um, gosh, 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 I wish I'd have done this earlier, let me see, I wanted to add a swirl of another color, Oop. that's not the right one, oh, that goes with the other watercolor, oh, for goodness sakes, here it is, okay, number two, that's what I want, hold on, hold on, there we go. 
I wanted to add, oh, now it's already soaked in. Oh, I wish I'd have done this before. See what I mean? Look at it, it's all over the place. Okay. Try not to just spill it all over my project. Okay. Where's a, here we go. All right, I got my water here. This soaked in, so it might be too late. Yeah, let me try to. I hate to soak it, it's just paper. <laughs> I don't want it to tear later. But I thought if I could add some type of like red, just, oops, kind of sporadically around. Just, um, thought it might look kind of cool. Oops, let me add more water. Let's see. I don't know, what do you think? Ah. And I'm trying to hurry. People get bored and I don't like my videos to run too long. Ah. <laughs> as you can as you can see. <laughs> A lot of times this kind of stuff gets edited out. <laughs> that makes such a mess. That's part of the beauty of art though, and that's partly why I wanted the channel. Good Lord, if I can do this, <laughs> anybody can do this. I mean, I don't have any special talent. I struggle, I make messes, and you know, things don't turn out, and I have to try to do them again, and you know. That's the way, well, that's just the way it goes when you create. That's part of the fun of it anyway. It doesn't all turn out, but sometimes it does turn out and you're like, wow, holy smokes, that was, that was so awesome. And if I hadn't tried it, I'd have never known uh, how cool it was. All right, that's enough. Okay, so that's that side. I think I'm going to go ahead and dry this before I flip it over. Okay, um, it's not all the way dry, but I just didn't want it to be soaking wet. Now, I think I'll flip it over since that's... Uh, somewhat dry on that side. Okay, I'm going to do it again. Let's bring over my paint. I'm suddenly starting to want to use it sparingly because I don't want to have to make up more. i got two other ones to do. Okay. So that's the color. And what I might do... Oopsie. Oh, hold on. Looks like I missed some. These little scalloped edges are easy to miss, or at least miss like a tiny little piece of it. So just be mindful of that. Okay. There's that. Now. Ah, okay. And just add a little bit of red. What do you think? Yeah, see, that's better. I wanted it really wet. Uh, I think the other one might have been a little dry, but hopefully it will still turn out. Now, I'm doing both sides because, you know, when you fold it, you're going to see the inside, and I wanted it to, you know, to look pretty as well. Whoops, that's too much. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, well, that's a hazard. At least of using a uh, small, a um, a small uh, brush. I'm going too quickly. Okay. Well, we'll keep going anyway. Okay. I'm going to dry this one. Oh, isn't that pretty? You cover your ears. Oh wow, look, this side is more dry and it became, became really pale. Hmm, this side has a lot more blue. Which do you like? 
Um, I feel like I need to add a little bit more. I want to add a little bit more blue. I think I want to put a little more water in it as well. Um, this is such a pain. Okay. Maybe I just don't push it down hard enough. When I push it down really hard, it does it does pretty good. I guess it's one of those when you barely kind of push it, it glops. <laughs> because, yeah, boy, does it. Okay. Always when I don't want it to, so I guess I need to pay attention as to how hard I'm pressing. Okay, I'm going to give it just another coat. Okay. There we go. I'm going to dry it again. Okay, so that's what we have. I'll tell you where my scissors. I don't know why, but they all have this like little notch. I guess that maybe they were connected to each other when they were originally made, but I don't want that there. So I'm going to cut that little notch off. Oh, hmm, still a little bit damp. I feel it now. Oopsies. All right. Hmm. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that wasn't so good, but that's okay. All right. So I'm. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do the other two and follow the exact same process that I did on this one and then I'll get back to you. Okay, I'm back to you and here is what we have. This was the one that we did together and these are the two other ones that I did. You know, I really like how that turned out, the more faded look. Maybe I shouldn't have put extra coats on these because I really kind of like that. But did the red work out? To be honest, it didn't quite work out the way I had imagined it would, especially on some of the sides. It's like kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, not so attractive, I don't think. But, you know, you never know sometimes until it dries how it's really going to look. So at the time I thought, well, you know, we'll see. And if it fades enough, it may look, you know, really nice. But I think I kind of overdid it on um, some of these. But that's just the way it goes. It's not terrible, and I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to keep going because we're not done yet. The next step is to um, add kind of a protective layer, and I do that with the Mod Podge. Just let's do the one that we did together. Oops. And I will move. Um, this is just parchment paper. I know it says nothing sticks to parchment paper, but... Let me tell you, this will stick to parchment paper. <laughs> when you put the Mod Podge on it, if you just kind of, you know, dry it like that, yeah, it's going to stick. So I learned that the hard way. But we will go ahead and do this one. And this is just the matte finish. I'll show you the pink one. It kind of gives it a glossy finish anyway. So this is the matte, and it looks kind of shiny. So if I were to have the gloss, whoo, I would think it would be really shiny. That's not the look I'm going for. So we are going to use this one. I kind of like to spray a little bit of water, just a mist. And I'm not using that other spray bottle. I just, that, that's just crazy. This one I can count on better. Okay, oops, there. All right, just to give it just a little bit of dampness. Just helps this Mod Podge go on a little better, but it's not super wet. Now usually these are a little more wrinkled than this, but after I did the first one, and as I did each one, I put it under a book, and when it was pretty much dried, uh, but I went ahead and just put it under a heavy book anyway, and that really did help. I, you know, I don't, I'm not even sure if there's any point in doing that because we have to do this step too and this can kind of make it wrinkle as well when I dry it. I keep having to remind myself this is just paper and it's got a bunch of holes in it so it doesn't take much to tear it. Doilies are very delicate. Just delicate as a doily. I'm not sure if that's a saying but it should be. It should be. Okay. So that's good enough for this side. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this and get back to you and I'll flip it over and then uh, Mod Podge to the other side. Oh, 
don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Okay, so here we go. And look. I lost, where is it? Can you see? I lost that piece right there. It got stuck because I didn't pick it up right away. And it wasn't very long either. As a matter of fact, I was actually blowing the heat over here to dry. I thought, you know what, let me go ahead and pick it up. And it was already kind of too late for that spot. I'm telling you, it sticks to this. All right, so we're going to stop saying so. We're going to go ahead and flip it over and Mod Podge this side as well. So that's uh, going to be it. So I'm going Oops, put the cap on and I'm going to pick it up before I start drying it at all because we know how this likes to act. Oh, come on. Easy does it. Okay. See, not so bad when it's still wet. That's the key. Pick it up and then start up to use your uh, heat tool. I guess it's the same thing as far as leaving it to air dry. I don't know that you would want to leave it there because it's going to stick. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. All right, so that's a little annoying. <laughs> I put it down. Uh, come here. Oh, no. I have a feeling this is not going to be good. Here's a lesson. <laughs> when you are drying it, completely remove it from where the rest of the glue, uh, Mod Podge is. The glue, the Mod Podge. Because I just flipped it, it flipped over and it was laying there and it picked up uh, with the heat gun. I guess it made what was dried wet again and it stuck on my pretty side and that does not make me very happy. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, I got it off. Let's see, hopefully this one will too. Come on. Okay, so far so good. So far so good. Oh. Hmm. Can I live with that? What do you think? <laughs> All right, I don't want to push it too far. That's not so bad. And it depends on where we put the fold. We might can hide it. Okay, so that's this one, the one we're doing together. And I'm going to go ahead and Mod Podge and do all this for the other two. And then I'll get back to you when they are all three dried and ready to go. All right, I'm back to you. And let me bring you in a little bit just so you get a really good look. Here's where we are. This is the one we did together, and these are the other two that I did off camera. I really love how they turned out. What we're going to do now is go ahead and do this fold. And I'm going to use the one that we did together. Isn't that pretty? I just love how it turned out. What you're going to do, this is technically the front side. You're going to flip it over because it flips up like this. I want to pick you know, in case maybe in my album I want to leave it open. You know, maybe I have something sticking in, but this part might be seen. I want to pick a part that I really like, or my favorite little area on the flip side that I want to, the prettiest part that I want to stand up. Um, basically is what I'm trying to say, which is not doing it very well, but okay. Let's take a look. Um, and honestly, I kind of like this purpley part. I think that's really pretty. This little section right here. All right, so I'm going to make that be the top. Now, what I used is for this little guy is a is a tag. If you have a small tag, if you don't have a tag, then just you know use a piece of cardboard. Um, I don't you know just cut a piece. And here's what you're going to do. See the round part, the solid part of your doily. I put it down to where both my corners are still, where's my top, okay there's my top, both my corners are still on the doily. I didn't want something sticking way out where there's holes all over the place. So 
I just put it down far enough to where the corners are still on the flat part middle section of the doily. And when you do that, it's, it takes like the top is maybe two thirds of the way up this tag for this example. It's just easier. You don't have to, to use something in the middle, but it does make it a little easier to help also ensure that your folds are even. So once I have that pretty much centered, you're just going to fold your sides in. All right, so we've got that one. We'll go ahead and bring the other one in like so. You might even want to bring in a bone folder and gently go over it if you really want to get a good crease. But if not, you can just kind of keep going, <laughs> like me. And here, we're going to bring in the top. Like so. Okay. If you pull this out, see if we can get it out. You just fold it and crease it and then we add some glue. And I am going to be using the new art glitter glue that I got the other day. Alrighty. And this part can be a little tricky because it's full of holes. <laughs> so, you know, you don't want it to seep through the holes and then you can't get anything in there. So, there's my sew word again. So, all right, I'm going to try to line that up. And I just want to put some glue where I know it's solid. Okay, I might have gone a little bit too high with the glue. Let me see. Okay. Oh, I love how quick that stuff sticks. That's just amazing. I need to pull this one up just a little bit to get my sides even. And it can be a little wonky to work with. It can be kind of hard to get the edges just perfect. Just do the best you can. So there we go. Now before that's too dry, where is, I'll grab this bone folder and just make sure, okay, I just want to make sure that it didn't glue all the way down and I couldn't get something to go in. Okay, so that's good. All right, so let's add some glue over here to this side. Push that down. Wow, that's so much easier than the glue I was using <laughs> to make this one. Where have you been all my life? This glue is amazing. If you don't have it, I highly recommend it. I mean, I literally, maybe two days ago, I just got this glue and it is so my favorite thing right now. And yeah, I meant to say that so. <laughs> I love this glue. It's wonderful. And let me stick this back in here. Okay, just to make sure. All right. And there we go. Now you can add it as your ephemera. And let me find something. You can. There we go. You can use it as a pocket. Isn't that cute? So cute. Let's see. You can always fold it over. If you don't want it to be a pocket, you just want it to be a piece of ephemera and not actually open. You can always glue the sides down here, put you a little button or some, you know, some other little adornment right here and just call it a day. Now something I was thinking about when I looked at this one is most envelopes don't go all the way up like this. I was thinking of trimming from this line 
down to where the crease is and getting rid of this little section because it just you know it can be kind of complicated because you'll really have to push something in just right to get it in there but the flip side is I mean it does look nice and it does help keep something sticking straight up if it's maybe um, a thin piece of paper that's you know not very thick and it may fall over this will having the extra little support here help keep it up I mean it, either way whatever you want to do but that is something I did think about so that is it for that one super easy and I thought it turned out really cute so I sorry <laughs> I would like to use these two and see if we can't figure out something else to do with at least one more maybe not the other one um, let me trim this off oh okay I did better that time see me and scissors okay all right that's got a big boo-boo in it let's move let's try to use this one it currently doesn't have a boo-boo all right that's my favorite side, so I'm going to have that be at the top. Let's see. Let's take this one and fold it all the way like this. So you're completely covering your solid center part. And you're taking the bottom and bringing it right up to the edge like this oops it's kind of hard to see because of the it's all painted now let's try to make it even as you can and the way I, if you're just trying to eye it <laughs> I just try to look at the scallops and there's a scallop and like a half there's this oops I'm going to trim that, but here's a scallop and then a half, so I think that must be probably about even. <laughs> I mean, it's not a perfect measuring system, but if you don't want to have to take the time to pull out your uh, ruler, then just kind of eye it, and that's, that's just kind of what I do. Okay, so there we go. Oops. Flatten that down. Let's see if I can use this. Okay. Can, gently over the areas that have the holes. It is still paper. <laughs> I'm sure it will tear. Okay, well, that's a little better. What happens? Um, what happens if we let's fold it down? Let's do another fold. Hmm. I think I'll try to make the top of my fold uh, go to the top part of the circle, of the solid part of the circle. It may be too much, but let's, that's what I'll go for. Okay. Can you see? Let me bring you down a little bit. Oops, sorry. The little button to do this is on the opposite side and I can't. Okay, there we go. All right, so <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't help but say so. That's just my word, I guess. I mean, I may not even edit them all out. I guess I should have everybody just kind of get used to it. <laughs> Break you in. Okay. All right, there we go. And let's take. <laughs> I caught myself. I almost said it again. And I'm going to pull this one up and try to crease it at the same spot like that. Oh, does that do it? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. That's kind of neat. Let's see what we could do. What could we do? Where is a here? Here's one of the tags that I had made. So it could be something where um, 
I don't know, maybe you wrap it around. Maybe you can use this as something that you can wrap around. Or maybe, you know, glue to the side of a, um, let's see. There's another little envelope. I thought this one would be a Christmas, so I have tons of ephemera I need to make. <laughs> but maybe you could even glue it down on the side of an envelope or the side of a page and have it be a tuck. Huh. Could be. Or maybe, you know, wrap it around a tag. And if we're going to do that... Again, just kind of eye it. But if we wrap it, you know, we could wrap it around like so. And really, that gives you, what, three, that's like three, three pockets. Well, maybe one pocket and like two tucks because, where's that little piece? Okay, so you have... This gives you a pocket here, okay, and let me find something else, okay. This, remember there's like two pockets in here, so you can put this, can you see, just behind that piece, and you have a little tuck there, and, oh, I need one more piece of something, I don't have it, hold on, okay, boy, I really had to dig. <laughs> I shouldn't. There is so much stuff on my table. But just for example purposes, you can have another little tuck in the front. Like so. I mean, you're not going to use this, but I just wanted to grab something small, and this was what I could find quickly. So you have a pocket and two tuck places if you fold your little doily like this. Huh. All right, so that's kind of cool. All right, I'm, I'm good with that. Nice, I like it. I like it. Okay, well, all right, do we want to try to do something with this one? Mm, let's see. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, See what happens when you just fold <laughs> without a guide? I mean, that's just, wow, that's like a, a major angle right there. Let me see. If you really want it to be square, and unless you just are better judge of, you know, doing this than me, it really helps to have some type of guide. So, let me try to straighten it up. going to do with this one. But yeah, see, that's a lot better. It might not be perfect still, but it's still pretty, it's still better than it was. And let's fold this one up like so. Um, <laughs> isn't that pretty? I just love using these doilies. That came out I think they come out really nice. Uh, this is the inside, and this is really the bad side. Let's see. Maybe I should have folded it the other way. Can't get that straight. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, so. I mean, that looks really nice. Honestly, you could probably just leave it like that. As another way to use the doily. Let's see. Isn't that nice? And you could have something going longer and maybe even, let's see, you could even do something like what I did here and just have something, you know, using the buttons and some string to connect the two. Now on this one I did what I look back and wished I would have done on this one with the buttons. Let me bring it up as you can so you can see. This one I actually threaded and put the string put the string through. So it looks like an actual button. <laughs> this one I didn't. 
I mean, it's just a button glued there, so, eh, you know. But this, I actually threaded some string through, and I kind of measured out how far I needed to be, and then put the string through this one, and tied a knot, and all yada yada yada, and put some glue down. So, it's pretty taut. Um, and, I, you know, so that's definitely something you could do here, and you could keep it kind of loose to where you could slide something through. This might be too small, actually. But you could put something through, and then, you know, maybe with a piece of lace. Ooh, that would be nice. That would be so pretty. So you could just leave it like that. Um, let's see. Or maybe you could fold it back like this. And fold it backwards. Pick a side, and that gives you uh, two places. I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Hold the phone. Now you might could do it on the edge. Now granted you can't tuck a whole lot there. But, I mean, you could tuck something small. Right? Hmm, maybe. So there's just so, I don't know, there's so many things you can do with these. I'm going to actually leave this one here because I'm not sure what I really want to do with it yet. I don't want to put too many creases in it, but I will leave it like that. Okay, so here are our three pieces of ephemera that we made today using a paper doily. And we used watercolor to color it, and we used Mod Podge to seal it and to help strengthen the paper. And the rest was just folding. So there you go. This one has the wraparound where you create a pocket and uh, two tuck spots. And this is like a little envelope. And this one... <laughs> We don't just we don't exactly know yet. <laughs> Not sure what we're gonna do with this one. We could leave it like this or we could keep folding and try to come up with something else. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you're able to utilize this information and use it in your own journal and create your own ephemera. I hope you get as much joy out of doing this as I do because I'm just having a blast. If you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up because in the YouTube world, those things mean so much to a channel. <laughs> so please hit the like button if you liked it. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and go out and try to make it. And if you do, for, please tag me. I would love to see what you come up with. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you hang on because I always put close-up pictures at the end of my videos. You don't want to miss those. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time. Bye.